Hey there, everybody. This is Mrs. Bashman, and we are going to review how to do the cherry blossom or plum blossom. So for this, you're going to need a large and a small brush. You're going to need three colors, gray, which is black with enough water in it to thin it down. You don't want it too thin. You don't want it too thick. Remember to slowly add water to see where you go. The red and the black have just enough water in them so that they flow, but you don't want it to be liquidy. You still want to see like chunks of paint in there. So, and if you want, even put some solid paint in there so that you can um, have some, some solid color. You don't want it to be very thin. So the first thing that we're going to do for cherry blossom or plum blossom is learn how to double load the brush with two different values of ink or paint. <clears throat> so we start by dipping our brush into the gray wiping off the excess making sure there's not any chunks or anything hanging out in our bristles and you notice how it makes the bristles beautifully pointy when we do that then we're going to take this and roll the tip in the black so that it looks kind of like a foxtail you just have a little bit of black on the tip there just a little bit and we're going to use the edge of the bristles to create our branch so we're going to start, I'm holding the brush relatively low. And remember, you want to go skinny pretty quickly. You don't want it to look like a lightning bolt. And your branches always go from thick to thin. That looks pretty good. So I've got one, two, three, four endings. At each of these endings, I want to cluster, cluster some blossoms. So I'm going to clean my brush off in my water. I'm going to squeeze out the excess water, pat it dry on my paper towel, <clears throat> and set the big brush aside. Now I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to get a little bit of black on my small brush, and I'm going to decorate the branch. Remember, we can add some like spots of black for moss or what have you especially like around the joints, just to give it some character. And if, you're, if your brush bristles split and get all hairy and wonky when you're doing that, that's fine. It's part of the, the beauty of this. Some people want that to happen. So it's not an imperfection. <clears throat> Once you've decorated your branch with some black, it looks pretty good. We got a nice, nice branch going on here. I can see the gradation here, the gray going up to the dark edge. It's going from fat to skinny. It doesn't look like a carrot. It doesn't look like a lightning bolt. It looks like a branch. Now we're gonna start with our blossoms. So our blossoms, again, we're using the small brush, loading it with the red, wiping off the tip. You can use any of the methods that you prefer, either spinning in a circle or twisting the brush to get your bristles to create that circular shape that Plum Blossom teaches you. You wanna have five petals for each one of your flowers and don't do them over the branch. Remember, if you overlap the branch, the branch is going to show through and it's going to look odd. So you're just going to have these blossoms floating out here just past the edge of that tree branch. Little twigs. I've got one, two, is there another one over here? And don't make your blossoms too small. Remember, a lot of us have a tendency to make them too small. And then when we go to put the pollen, the sepals and the pollen, it's really difficult if you have teeny tiny little blossoms. So these are really tiny. I really need to make them bigger than, the, than they are. Make a bud here. I'm going to make a better blossom. Okay. I managed to get three out of one, one dip with paint. That's better. That's more like a decent size. Blossom. Maybe that part of the tree isn't uh, isn't getting enough fertilizer. A little stunted growth. That's okay. We'll forgive it. That's uh, better. Make sure I move this a little closer so you can see. I'm trying out this method. I'm actually using my laptop to video this. A little webcam on my laptop. <clears throat> as opposed to my phone, because I find when I'm doing my phone, it, the, the video quality is not as good. The video is small. When you try and blow it up, it doesn't look nice. There we go. 
I lost the picture on my computer for a minute. Hopefully that didn't mess up the recording. I'm right, gonna get a little more paint, wipe the ed excess off on the edges. I'm gonna do a blossom here. Maybe another little bud here. Not a blossom, a bud. A bud. Ooh, that's long. This will be a long bud. Another, another little bud in there. Gotta have a friend. You don't want to have lonely flowers. Give them some friends. That's probably good for over there. I feel like I need another one over here, though. But it's still too empty. Looks good. Put a couple here. Um, I'm waiting for these first ones to dry enough that I can demonstrate the the sepals with pollen. Because remember, if it's still wet and you try and put those little black lines and dots in there, it's just gonna it's gonna go everywhere. It's gonna make a mess. We don't want that. And feel free to turn your paper around if you want to face it different directions. Whatever works. You're going to do three practice sheets for plum blossom and photograph it, three for bamboo, three for orchid, and three for chrysanthemum. And then turn that in on Artsonia. I'm going to put one right here, just kind of peeking out. Hiding out back there. That looks pretty cool. I like that. All right. Now you can do lots more blossoms than this, but I just want to do some to demonstrate. So now I'm going to go back up here to the first place I was at because that should be the driest area. I'm going to get some black, wipe it off because I want a super sharp tip. This is where if you have runny black, it's it's going to mess things up. Now remember when you're doing this shape, let me get a little test piece of paper here. When you're doing this shape, you want to do your lines like a bouquet. They should all be going out like that. Where's my camera? See it? So you're going to start with like a V. So start with a V shape or and then add a few more, add a few more. You don't want too many. And then we're going to dot pollen on top of it. So this is the shape that we're going for right there. Don't make them too huge. That's why doing the tiny little blossoms can be a pain in the butt. No, oh, no, there went my big brush. Hold on. There we go. So you don't want to do your blossoms too small because then when you go to do these, they're going to look really odd. So you want them in the middle. You don't want them to really reach past the petals. You want them to sit inside of the flower. Unless your your blossom is really sitting exactly on its side, they're not going to appear that long. And they should always grow up towards the sun. So for these blossoms, my my pet, uh, sepals are growing this way. Sepals, is that right? I always get them mixed up. They're sepals and stamen. Stamen, I think that's what it is. Sepals is the thing holding the bud on. The stamen are always growing up. So if I'm doing my branch sideways this way, the sun is going to be up here. My sepals are going to, or my stamen are going to be reaching this direction. So I noticed some of you when you were practicing, your your stamen were growing in all kinds of weird, wonky ways. So try and get them all to go in the same direction. There we go. And remember for the the sepals, which are the, the buds that hold it onto the branch, you're going to do the stroke where you put the tip down and push to the side so it creates a triangle. You can see I did a very long stroke there, but it's going to be very short. Down and push so it's just a little triangle. And those, again, are going to be closest to the branch. And then for the bud, you do a V, and you could do maybe a tiny little bit of a, like a stem, reaching towards there, but don't, don't continue it. You don't want to overlap. You want the, you know, these to, to be floating outside of the branch. You don't want them to look like they're overlapping the branch. There. 
Let me bring this up closer so you can see. I lost the picture for a second. Hopefully it's still moving. I'll bring my blossoms up here closer. Uh, no. Can you see? No, I've got to go this way. Get it together, Mrs. Bashman. There we go. Okay, can you see my little blossoms? With their little uh, stamen and their little sepals. So you're going to do that for all of yours. If you have any questions, just let me know. Remember, you're going to practice three of these on the newsprint that I gave you and then take pictures of them and upload them to Artsonia. Thanks.